Welcome back to Keras Investment, where investments are made simple. I am excited. I hope you're excited too. Now, in today's video, I will be discussing real estate in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Now, I will be start making videos of real estate in New York, in LA, um, in Texas, and of course in Vancouver, Canada, and anywhere that real estate is getting unaffordable. It's late right now for some of you that's getting into the game. If you are an invested um, person in real estate, it could be a personal, it could be as an investor, or simple as owning your own home, then this is a great video for you guys to take a look into. Welcome back. Of course, my name is Ken, entrepreneur investor um, in the stock market, in real estate, and in small business. As I said time and time again, we talk about investing on this channel. Um, you may see a lot of videos I created um, in terms of investing in stocks, in terms of investing um, in, in mortgages and different areas where you can actually make money. But real estate is a passion of mine. Um, again, this is something everyone should consider. The market for real estate is getting um, unaffordable for regular working people. Um, if you take a look at the age now for people that are moving from home to actually purchase a house in this market, it is absolutely um, crazy. Now on my screen, this is realtor.ca. This is a common site that I use myself, what people use when they're looking to sell their house or if they're looking to buy or purchase a new house. It could be commercial or it could be for residential. There are a few other sites as well to purchase and buy a house um, in terms of through agents. Agents could have um, deals that they can actually get houses um, from their brokerages, from different brokerages with their own networking as well. But an average user, when they're trying to buy a house in the city of Toronto or anywhere in Canada, this is one of the sites that people are trusted in because this site is basically the agent and, and brokers have uploaded all the houses that they're selling and houses that they um, are looking um, to lease or to rent um, to people. So some of the main things that I have a note here that you need to have or to consider before you look um, for a house in the market. Number one, you need to know or have an agent. This is very important. The number one thing that you need to do when you're looking for a house, I have a list that I will be going down with you is to choose an agent. The right agent will close the right deal for you, will negotiate the purchase price for you. This is a person that you need to be able to be trusted in, right? You have the right agent. Um, that agent will make the right deal. If you're selling, they will get the best offer. If you're buying, they will negotiate the best price for you. Number two, you need to have a budget, okay? You need to have a budget um, that you're thinking that, okay, this is how much we'd like to spend. Now, in terms of um, knowing your budget, very, very important. You also need to know how much you will get approved for a mortgage. Now, a lot of people have budget based on what they're working. They think, okay, we can afford this house. But the main issue is that you can afford the house based on your payments, right? Because you know how much you're making um, by working. But you need to actually go and get a mortgage approval first to see how much the bank think they can trust or lend you overall. This is very important because if you can afford more than what the bank um, is willing to give you, you won't be able to get the right mortgage for the house that you're looking to buy. Um, number two, explore different mortgage options. All right, a lot of people, what they're doing, they if they're banking with say Royal Bank or with TD Bank or with Scotia Bank. Their intended uh, or the intention is they will always go directly to the bank and they get a mortgage. Now, there are a lot of different mortgage brokers that actually could give you great rates. Some of these mortgage brokers are well, as well, <clears throat> excuse me, is actually giving you the same type of mortgage as what your bank would give you, or even the same type of mortgage from your bank with a better rate. So you need to consider um, exploring to see the best rate. Either you go through a mortgage agent and then he will be able to check to see what's the best rate for you. 
or if you're transferring your mortgage from one property to another, that's a different topic we'll go over in a different video. That's another option as well. Now, once you know um, the budget, you have an agent and you have a mortgage pre-approval and you understand where um, your finances are and what's your limit, that's when you start to go house hunting. This is very important. Absolutely. So once we uh, make an offer, of course, as I said before, the agent needs to do some comparables to see um, the last few houses that got sold in this area, how much or what was the price range and are these houses have something similar? What are the comparables? Are the same three bedrooms? Are the same three washrooms? Are the three bedroom and two washrooms? Um, there's different things to look into when you're doing um, the checklist to see um, why the price is different or why the price should be same as the house that you're looking for um, you or your client, whatever it is, right? So this is just something very basic. Um, I'm not into telling you how the agents do their job. I'm just giving you an idea uh, roughly of how they start to choose um, these houses. Now, keep in mind as well, the land size make a difference and make sure that you're um, aware of what the actual land tax will be for these houses as well. Now, <clears throat> next on the list is very, very important. Now, it is a crazy real estate market out there. So a lot of people, what they're doing right now is that because they want to get in on the auction to be able to um, get their offer accepted, what they're doing is they are um, submitting an offer on a house with um, no contingencies or no inspection make sure you don't fall into that trap now if the house is fairly new like in five years new then that's a different story because typically a house that's five years new then there shouldn't be anything wrong to be worried about but if you're looking at a house that's 20 25 years old then you got to consider roof you got to consider electrical you got to um uh, consider mold consider um are there uh, water leaks or a basement cracking. But it's a lot of things that you need to look into. So I don't want to sound too uh, negative, but based on experience, those are things that you need to look for and things that you should keep in mind because it will cost you um, in the long run. Now, <clears throat> once this is finished, then the next step, obviously, once you make an offer, once they accept the offer, if they don't accept the offer, then obviously it's a different house you will have to um, search for but if the seller accept the offer and then you get an inspection done inspection came through now you go to you know you send all the paperwork to your lawyer and, and lawyer deal with the uh, the land title transfer um, taxes they look into if there's any liens on the house they look into if there's any back bills whether it's water bills whether it's tax whether it's anything that's assigned to your house if there's a lien on your house, if someone didn't pay, um, if they owe like a big outstanding bill, someone could actually place a lien on the house, like a creditor. If there's a lien on the house, and if your lawyer don't do a proper check, and then the house gets sold to you, then that could be another problem that lies in your hand. So these are some of the things that you need to look into in real estate. Now, obviously, you got to make sure the utilities, as I said, is paid up. You got to make sure. Um, your address is changed once you take over ownership. And yeah, that's the basic process. So the process basically is you choose the right agent, you know what your budget is, you get a mortgage pre-approval, then you start house hunting. Once you find a house that you like, then you make an offer. Um, if they accept the offer, you do a home inspection. And once the home inspection is finished, then the deal is closed and you're happy. You take your keys and then you start living um, your life in your new house. That was extremely simple, right? Absolutely. Anyone could do it. Guys, a lot of people make owning a house seems very difficult when it's not. It's actually a simple process. There is two issues for owning a house. Either you can get qualified or you're not qualified for the mortgage. This is what scare a lot of people. Now, what many people don't know is that there are a lot of different lenders out there that will lend for mortgages. You just got to find a very, uh, like a reputable mortgage brokerage and they could help you to find your dream house. So it is possible for anyone that can 
um, that is working and have the money to own a house and live the dream as what anyone wants to. So again, until next time, I hope this video makes sense to you. I hope I'm speaking to someone that's wondering what the processes are. And hey, maybe you'll see the next video in terms of how to choose in your right mortgage broker or mortgage agent. So again, guys, until next time. Oh, <laughs>